Episode 14 with Mujtaba Merchant Suban vs. Is sex accessible? Oh, very difficult topic, no? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. My dear listeners, hope you are all doing very good and healthy. Today we have a very interesting personality on show. He is Mujtaba Merchant, a software professional working with TCS Bangalore. So Mujtaba is a very interesting personality and uh, you can check out my video interview with him on my YouTube channel. Let's welcome Mujtaba without much delay. Mr. Mujtaba Marchant, welcome to Suman vs. Human. Hi Suman, I'm very excited to be on your show. Uh, there's a lot of things that we need to talk about and I'm sure our listeners will enjoy this particular podcast of yours. Yes. Mujtaba, today situation became so worse now because when I start my day in the morning, in, on the, my day always starts with a lot of frustration because... Things are not going the way it should go. And uh, day in, day out, we are stuck with so many problems uh, within the country. You know, you will end up whole day messed up. Ranging from software accessibility or, you know, it, it, it might be a topic uh, which involves treating minorities. It, it may involve, uh, you know, the basic rights of human beings. So I want you to throw some light on this and let's discuss about it. Sure, uh, Suman, uh, before we get into that, I think a bit of background is required for your listeners. Uh, they should know that I have a disability and I am sight impaired and I'm blind in both the eyes. So I rely a lot on technology. I use a lot of software and I use a software called a screen reader to help me use my mobile phone as well as my uh, computer so this, this software is uh, this technology is uh, available on both the devices and it makes the using the computer and using the smartphone accessible i have a question sorry for interrupting sure sure so for people like you how important is accessibility uh, when you're talking about accessibility, it basically means that all the digital resources, including your apps as well as website, need to follow a particular standard or a guideline, which is known as Web Content Accessibility Guideline. And uh, mostly I have seen companies in the United States which are governed by a law called the American with Disabilities Act, imposing this strictly on on their uh, apps and websites. Whereas in India, we have a big breakthrough happened with the RPWD Act, which was in uh, 2016. And that also, you know, uh, has uh, implications towards digital accessibility. And I'm not sure if you and your audience is aware, but... Uh, you have you have must have heard of the digital India campaign. And there's also an accessible India campaign. Unfortunately, the accessible India campaign is not keeping up with the digital India campaign because there are so many apps that have been introduced and there are so many websites that have been introduced by the government which are not still accessible to people like us. Uh, I say people like us because we are extremely marginalized and extremely discriminated and we don't have equal access to technology and information across the digital world or the digital arena. But my question remains unanswered. How important is accessibility for you? In one word, I I don't think so. I would be able to have this conversation with you without having uh, you know accessibility implemented in the apps that I'm using to talk to you on on my phone. 
for that matter. So it is extremely important, right? Yeah, it is uh, as important as air to me because that keeps me connected. That gives me equal access to the internet, equal access to services, information. Like, for example, I cannot read a physical newspaper, but I know what's happening in my country thanks to the internet. And I cannot access the internet if the, if the browser is not accessible, if the content posted on that particular website is not accessible. So yes, it's as uh, important as air to me. When it is such an important thing, but why it is not preferred or why it is not considered by any corporates today in this country? Don't they I really think, know that it is important for people with disabilities? See, number one, I feel there is a lack of awareness. Second, there is ignorance. Third, they feel it is a feature which is going to cost them because when they have designed the app or designed the website, they haven't taken into consideration that people with disabilities, especially people with sight impairment, also will visit their website, also would require to use their application. So, if it's not a part of their software de development life cycle and it is not their uh, agenda or uh, they do not, they lack awareness on how to get it done, even after they are being told about it or being, you know, constantly reminded that they need to, and we have the RPWT Act uh, stating compliance, but uh, that, that is nothing but ignorance on the part of these businesses or these companies, which is a very troublesome uh, state to be as far as a citizen with uh, a disability is concerned. You know, you're talking about uh, complete uh, ecosystem being, uh, you know, uh, made uh, inaccessible. That's, that's further adding, as you said, when you wake up, you wake up with a lot of frustration because of this, because there are so many barriers that you have to deal with in the day uh, you know, uh, when you compare it to a person, on an everyday normal, so-called no, normal person, or a person without disability. So, it, the magnitude is huge. The impact is huge. It is not an uh, issue of, you know, awareness or something like that. Because we are, we are reporting uh, the incapability of this corporate when it comes to accessibility on social media. And we shoot many emails to them which unfortunately they do not respond most of the times. So I think they are aware of all these things. But I, what I personally feel is they don't want to make it accessible. And I still, my mind still puzzles why. I think I have an answer for that for you. But before that, uh, there is another aspect you have to look at it. Okay. The world is designed for those who can see, walk, hear, everything normally. But the minute you have a disability, you are no longer part of that world. Mm. And 95% or 98% of the business is coming from the mainstream. That means to say people without a disability. So why will they care for a minority which is uh, hardly going to get them any business? See, uh, in, in, uh, in the United States, it's a matter of best practices and compliance to the law. But here, there is no such, uh, you know, compliance or uh, requirement. Although it's stated as the uh, requirement in the RPWD Act, but they don't take it seriously because there is no uh, way to uh, take them on that particular uh, uh, aspect legally. Uh, I will share a personal experience recently. Like, for example, I was trying to update the address on my Aadhaar card. And for that, I have to visit the login page for Aadhaar, which is inaccessible. Reason being, there's an image capture on that particular website, and I, being blind, cannot solve an image capture. I require either a text or an audio capture. But, but I try to reach out for help through their own grievance mechanism system. It has been more than a month that I have been following up with them, mail after mail. I've also written to the uh, Ministry of uh, Social Welfare, and they have responded back, and they have filed a uh, legal case on my behalf. And then it has gone to the CEO of the person, the unique uh, identity uh, 
card thing which is for Aadhaar, their CEO, and then I get a letter of commitment that they require 95 days to work on this particular aspect, which is not really needed. 95 days is more than three months. Yeah. And it took me more than a month just to get the message across. Mm-hmm. And it was mm-hmm. quite complicated because I had to shuffle between my own work and following up with them. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine the number of websites that I have to write to just to get one work done. Or yes. number of people I have to write to. To my listeners, I would like to inform them that uh, Aadhaar is a kind of a social security number in India. So in in America, you guys have a social security number. Likewise, in India, every Indian citizen uh, will have a Aadhaar ID or Aadhaar number. So look now how unfortunate it is that uh, such a primary mode of identification in this country itself is not accessible for the people suffering from blindness. What do you... Uh, think now or much about do they really work on this i mean as they committed that answer we will only come to know after 95 days i have kept my calendar <laughs> with a reminder <laughs> so uh, after 95 days if it's not implemented uh, it's time that you know we write to them again and the whole drama starts so uh, you know from the scratch mm-hmm. you know what suman uh, honestly speaking and this goes out not only to you but all your listeners and anybody who's in the field of uh, uh, who's in the legal field who can take up you know such cases and help us legally pursue the cause through uh, a legal channel because now the RPWD act clearly requests this particular uh, compliance and uh, even the private players need to follow this act and if this act is not enforced on them legally they can take it very lightly like for example you can send them legal notices and trust me i would i would really like to see a day where i could sue a company for not being accessible in india yes, yes. that would definitely make a change the law legal support is very important because unless unless these companies receive a legal notice unless we pull these guys to the court of law, these people are not going to change. I agree with you totally. But here there are, see, there are so many other complications. A normal uh, normal citizen or a simpleton citizen like me will not know the law. And the legal experts have a good hold of the understanding of the act as well as the law. And as as a provider to my family, I might not have that much time to follow up with, with uh, the court and follow up with the lawyer or whoever it is who's representing me to you know uh, to be able to engage to that extent where i can keep visiting the court and trying to get my point across so this system has to be so well equipped that you know that uh, if it is not complied in so many days there will be a there will be a financial penalty there will be a penalty and that penalty can range anywhere from 1 lakh to around 15 lakhs mm, mm. you know that has to be compensated to the complainant. Mm-hmm. That should be the that should be the approach, because yes. if you don't keep any legal penalty on them, I mean, uh, thing on that, they will just take it very lightly, saying that oh, this is just another legal notice, and we can ignore it. Muchtaba, I have few quick questions, and I want answers for these questions. Now, uh, okay, what is Zomato and what is Swiggy? What kind of apps they are? They are applications that help you order food online. So you basically have an app which you download on your phone and you can search for a dish yeah. and you can get so, it delivered to yourself. Yeah. So I, I consider them as an essential application because, you know, uh, for persons with disability, because we cannot move out uh, easily, right? Generally, if, I, if I'm hungry, I cannot start my bike or I cannot you know, get into my car to go to a restaurant and buy food from them, right? So for a person with disability, such kind of food ordering applications is a big rescue when you need food. You agree or not? Uh, I totally agree. And uh, I will give you a few instances where these applications have failed me. Uh, See, there are times when I have guests at home. 
and uh, I need to entertain them. I probably call them for lunch and things like that. And there are times when I don't have help available to me and I have to make the arrangement. So that time I depend on these apps and these apps failed me many times where I'm not able to independently order uh, the food online and get it delivered. The other sad part is that uh, it's quite embarrassing that, you know, for everything that you need, you need to ask for help. Like you have to ask somebody, yeah, you'll have to ask somebody who's cited to be able to order the food for you or get even simple things like, you know, uh, getting uh, breakfast done and things like that. You can do it as a, uh, as a, I'm not saying that you can't do it as a sight impaired person, but suppose you feel like having something for breakfast and you just can't order it using these apps. So it's pathetic that, you know, these apps are not accessible. So that further hinders us from being independent, you know, in terms of uh, ordering food. And this, this uh, two companies are Duopoly in India and uh, we only have two food uh, ordering applications at, at, at this time in the country and unfortunately both of them are not accessible and they don't even bother to respond when uh, someone goes to them for help right so in this case in this case the government should certainly take a serious action on those companies to make their platforms accessible but unfortunately here even the government is not accessible, right? Yeah, unfortunately, as I said, we have the RPWD Act, which is uh, 2016, which clearly mentions compliance to even private companies to comply with accessibility. However, there is no legal penalty for not complying. So, excuse me, that has given them the upper hand to, uh, to totally neglect that compliance and not implement uh, I don't want to be extremely rude, but uh, recently I had used Swiggy and uh, Swiggy was slightly accessible in terms of ordering food. But when it came to the other uh, parts of the applications, like they have something called as Genie and they have something called as Insta, Insta or something, where you can order eggs and bread and milk and things like that for your daily thing, that part was totally inaccessible. But unless we have as i said we, unless we have don't have a penalty it's not going to work out if they're going to take this law very lightly they're not going to implement accessibility and we still will not have access to these apps and it's just not with the food apps it's also with apps like ola uh, if you look at ola uh, and uh, the one which we, they have released recently in karnataka called namayatri which is a local auto, uh, you know, uh, ride hailing app. It's totally inaccessible. The only app I have access to is Uber. Mm-hmm. And Uber is not an Indian company. It's an international company. So they have complied with accessibility and I can I can uh, request for ride. But there are a lot of times when uh, I don't get a ride on Uber, whereas my uh, colleague or my friend is able to get a ride on Ola and Rapido and the Namayatri app because they have access to those apps and they can use those apps and I can't use it. Yeah. So it, it really hinders a lot of things like time. There's a lot of time involved in trying to get things done. Suppose I have to go for a meeting. I can't go to a meeting on time. I have to pre-plan my trip, you know, over two days in advance to make sure that everything is fine. And, you know, I have a ride available or make sure that I have a backup of friend or somebody who can take me to my... Uh, place or destination which I want to go to. So yeah, so there's a lot of uh, lag and disconnect between all these apps and accessibility and uh, it's a shameful uh, state of affairs where we being a minority uh, of a minority of a minority I would say (laughs) that uh, we are are being (laughs) being neglected as forget uh, a human being uh, even as a citizen of this country where you don't have equal access to information from the government. Okay, now tell me what is Airtel, what is Geo, what is uh, Vodafone, what is BSNL, what are these names, what 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 these companies into? It looks like we are back to school, we are doing the ABC of technology. These companies of course are 
telecom providers, service providers, which uh, connect you either by the internet or the, the telephone or the, the calling functionality. Can you consider uh, telecom services as an essential service? Oh, yes. Tell me one person who cannot do with the, without their phone today. Right. <laughs> one now... person I'm talking. I'm not talking about a disabled <laughs> person. I'm talking about one person who cannot do without their phone today. <laughs> yeah. Now, tell me, uh, yeah. do they uh, care about people with disabilities in this country? Uh, first, let us start with the richest guy, the richest Mukesh Ambani's uh, company, Jio. Uh, are they really worried about accessibility and stuff like that? E is their applications accessible? No, your first question was more relevant to what my answer would have been. You said, do they really care about people like us? Yeah. I would like to ask you or you and your audience to ask, ask them whether they consider us as people, us as people first. <laughs> then second, can, do they consider us us as citizens of the country, mm -hmm. don't we also eat food and breathe the air that they breathe? So, no. Your answer is no. They, they have least uh, understanding or interest in making their applications and services accessible to us. Today, I have a phone connection. Thanks to somebody who helped me get the connection done. Uh, I could have gone online and filled up the form and got everything done myself, but their websites are inaccessible. I keep guess, getting messages from Airtel that I have this offer, I have that offer, I need to use their Thanks app to avail that offer. But their Thanks app is so thankless to me that <laughs> I cannot use it. Understand how it is. So they're way far behind in terms of being accessible as a service. So, so, telecom services are also not accessible to the person with disabilities in this country. Now, now tell me, how about uh, electricity? So, do you consider electricity as an essential service? Yes, it is an essential service. It is a part of the utilities that we require. I am 100% sure. At least you will say yes to this. I think uh, electricity department, uh, uh, their applications, their services are accessible. Please say yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know because uh, first thing when I got my electricity bill, I made sure that I took uh, somebody's help to note down my account number digitally. So by with this account number, I was able to use... Uh, Google Pay, which is again not an Indian app, to add the biller to my uh, profile. Uh -huh. So I was able to get my, uh, use my account ID to add my uh, electricity uh, uh, thing to uh, provider to my app, my Google Pay app. So whenever uh, the bill is generated, I get a notification from Google Pay that you have a bill pending and it shows me what is the amount and I'm able to pay. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I, I would have depended on somebody taking the bill, going to the office and uh, making the payment. Yeah, in, because in their electricity application, their, their mobile application is not accessible. Yeah, I would say that I've always been using Google Pay to yes. do all my uh, bill payments. And, and I've tried uh, Paytm. Paytm has been a failure in terms of accessibility. But to some extent, they seem to have improved. Uh, but still, my preferred app is Google Pay compared to any other yeah, because Google app like has, phone Google Pay. has got some soft corner for people with disability. I'm sure. About no, that. Google has to Google see one thing is that Google and any other company like Microsoft or Apple, they have they not only comply because there's a legal obligation, but they understand that it is the right thing to do. That is to follow the web content accessibility guidelines. Like, for example, if if uh, I was to call you for dinner and I asked my mother to cook something for you and you ate the food, you would still say my mother cooks the best. You will not say that, you know, your mother is cooking better than my mother. You will never say that. Why? Because they have that quality ingredients, that consistency, which you, you have become used to and you start liking. So that that's exactly how these companies treat accessibility. It is, not, it is not something special that they're doing, but it is a part of their uh, best practices that they have to follow. You go on any site of Microsoft and you will see the option there uh, about, about accessibility. Just go read up 
on their accessibility commitment. Go read up on Google's accessibility commitment, read up on Apple's accessibility commitment, and you'll be surprised to see how detailed they are. They even have instructions on how to use their products with a screen reader. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have not mm-hmm. seen one company in India have the, forget the instruction how to use their app with an, uh, with an ac- uh, accessibility, with their, uh, with the software, but uh, not even the, there's not even a commitment statement on their website. Mm-hmm. Even if it's there, it's for sure. I have one more question. Do people with disability get themselves entertained? Uh, will they be able to watch movies and listen to songs? Do do you think that entertainment is really important for people with disabilities? <laughs> a very difficult question to ask. <laughs> uh, if you don't consider us, us as people, don't consider us as citizens, don't consider us, us as human, uh, so Suman versus human, I'm telling you this, that, you know, uh, it, it's assumed that blind people don't watch movies. It's assumed that uh, people with uh, disabilities don't need entertainment. So I guess it's not that important for us to have access to such platforms. Because you know uh, OTT platforms like there are uh, Hotstar, there is Z5, there is uh, Woot, uh, Geo, Geo, Geo Cinema, Amazon Prime, Netflix. All these applications are accessible? No, except for Amazon Prime and Netflix, again, not uh, Indian apps, uh, Every all of them are inaccessible. Amazon Prime and Netflix are accessible. And again, because they're not, they're, again, they're not Indian apps, and the ones that have been developed in India are totally inaccessible and extremely hard to navigate and use. And uh, you would be surprised that, you know, Amazon Prime and Netflix offer a lot of entertainment that has... Uh, uh, accessibility features not only of their app but they also offer audio description and uh, 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 text uh, transcripts for the people who cannot hear so that they can follow the dialogue of the movie what about indian OTTs? do they have uh, uh, do they have audio descriptions <laughs> i can't even use their app forget about Forget about uh, trying to use them and expecting audio descriptions and text text uh, transcripts from them. So they, they don't even uh, see. They don't even wish to entertain you. So it's not possible for me to use those apps. In fact, I tried a few apps which I was interested in. Uh, lately, I am hooked on to this uh, app called Pocket FM, which I don't know if your audience is aware. It has these audio stories. And somebody like me would really enjoy these audio stories. But uh, the app is so difficult to use. So to get to a particular title and to listen to a particular audio track, it's quite difficult to navigate. So it's a frustrating experience instead of being an entertaining experience. Mujtaba, people say that uh, India has got very good software industry. India stands number one when you talk about technology and software developers, software companies. And I'm surprised when we are, you know, so advanced, when we are developed so much in software, then why why this accessibility thing we are lagging behind? Because of the legal requirements, what you mentioned, right? Apart from that, apart from that, do you find any other gaps? The other gaps that I see is, the one is, as I said, lack of awareness, ignorance. Uh, and if the apps are developed locally, they don't need to comply. If they are doing it for a client or they need doing it for an MNC or a, you know, a company like that, they have to comply to accessibility guidelines. Otherwise, they're not bothered. So these are the gaps and these are the reasons. And mostly I would say negligence and ignorance. That's all I can say. And a lot of uh, the developers that I've come across, they don't even know the a of accessibility. So there's definitely a lack of awareness, which brings me to the fact that uh, the engineering college not offer a comprehensive course on accessibility. And that causes a bigger gap in the industry. Lack of uh, professionals in the field of accessibility for software. That is what it is. Mujtaba, disabled people, do they use money? Cash, cash. <laughs> uh, 
कैश इन करेंसी लाइक इन अ फिजिकल नोट नो बट नाउ थैंक्स टू द डिजिटल इंडिया मूवमेंट वी हैव स्टार्टेड यूजिंग आवर वॉलेट इन 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 इंडिया एटीएम मशीन्स आर नॉट एक्सेसिबल हां दैट वे नो दे आर नॉट एक्सेसिबल वेरी डिफिकल्ट but my experience so is is quite different uh, mujtaba i carried my headphones uh, i visited over 150 atm machines in this last 12 months i plugged in my headphones it it just says uh, welcome to blah 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 bank and that's it mm. so it goes blank then you need to ask beggar on people to read the screen for you once you select that option you you will hear some random buzzer sound something some kind of music and again mm-hmm. you know it goes blank so i couldn't use that and uh, later i contacted couple of my friends and they told me that uh, it is just for the name sake i would agree with you just for the name sake because uh, i'm sorry i do not withdraw cash as much as you do i guess so i use uh, only digital uh, payment modes again google pay uh, google pay being the one which i rely on heavily but uh, my last experience with an atm which claimed to have uh, accessibility features in it uh, failed me to an extent where it was so embarrassing uh, i had to, uh, gone to withdraw some cash and i expected as soon as i plug in my headphones i'd be voice guided on the screen whatever was happening on the screen so it would say welcome to whichever bank and then uh, please enter your pin code to continue and then i would hit uh, type in my pin code which is on a physical keypad having the number 5 key with a notch <laughs> but everything was digital and everything was on screen uh surprisingly i can use a iphone without buttons but i cannot use an atm without buttons so mm-hmm. there's a lot of uh, uh, technology that is missing in these atms that would make make it accessible and unfortunately most of the bank branches and most of the atm machines are not accessible for wheelchair user also they are they are going through hell lot of problems in this country government offices are not accessible they are not made wheelchair compatible hotels are not made wheelchair compatible atm machines are not made wheelchair compatible shopping malls are not made wheelchair compatible the, i don't understand like uh, how badly we are treated in this country like i think for me we are for me we are like table chair cats dogs see i agree with you when you're talking about physical infrastructure and physical infrastructure accessibility there are many challenges in terms of real estate there are many challenges in terms of how the city has been planned there are many challenges into which area of that particular city that particular building is so renovation work is of course expensive and you can't uh, expect them to be accessible overnight but that notion even when they start uh, building something new that uh, idea of making that particular facility accessible itself does not exist because we as people don't exist on this planet what is the plan of action like how how uh, shall we go ahead and uh, fix this so oh, i would really like uh, see i am an advocate of uh, accessibility so i do write on a lot of forums and i do write to a lot of companies but my voice is just one voice in a million voices and it gets uh, subdued in the noise so i would really appreciate if we i have allies who can you know uh, amplify my voice so that it get to those people who i want to target to, uh, to get their apps accessible allies is allies are very important uh, uh, 
uh, you know, a set or group of people that, you know, work for a particular cause. And uh, a lot of allies will have uh, contacts with, with people in companies, with people in the industry to, you know, uh, get the voice heard. You know, that's important. The voice needs to be heard. So it's just me, one person dealing with my frustration and dealing with my uh, limitations. It becomes very difficult. But if I have allies, see from the community also, I have a lot of allies. I want people to get together and understand how critical it is to make uh, things accessible so that we can independently uh, take care of our lives rather than depending on others. It's about human dignity, it's about human rights, it's about a lot of other things which, you know, are uh, essentially required for one to live uh, a, a life that way. Now, I want to give uh, some political color to my show. In India, politics are hot. There are, there are people from Congress, there are people from BJP, there are people from XYZ. They go to houses, they go to people, they meet people, they promise. The question here is, do these political parties come forward to people with disability to promise something? Do they really promise anything for people with disabilities? Uh, answer again is a blunt no, because again we are a minority of a minority of a minority. And a lot of uh, persons with disability are not seen in uh, places where, uh, you know, they are considered to be uh, citizens of the country that way. Like, for example, I'm talking to you about uh, going to the ballot polls to cast their vote and things like that, which is made impossible and inaccessible because of the lack of infrastructure and lack of uh, technology that they, they use. You know, the technology they use is not accessible. So it becomes very difficult for somebody in a wheelchair to go and uh, give their vote or somebody who's blind to go and give their vote. So it's quite challenging uh, as far as... Uh, and they do not reach out to us because they think that... They, 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 I don't know, I feel again it's ignorance that we are not to be considered as vote bank. Can you tell me the total number of approximate population of people with disability, at least when we talk about blind? Uh, I think I have data from 2007 or 2011. I don't remember the exact uh, roughly, number. Roughly? Roughly, I would tell you that uh, we are, the, I think, the largest country to have persons with disability that I don't know what the figure is. I'm and this sure might it's... be a big uh, vote bank, right? Yes, it is a big vote bank. And, uh, but still, uh, these these political parties don't look at us. Yeah, that is true. I want to share a, a very interesting experience of mine. A few years ago, I've I been to uh, an ophthalmologist to, to get my eyes check because my eye was paining. Now, I am a blind person, right? I went to the hospital and I was given a form to fill up to book an appointment. Just imagine. <laughs> and this is not, uh, not at the gynecologist, right? It's at the ophthalmologist. Yes. Who's supposed to be specializing in eye care. Yeah, yes. Okay. Sounds yes. interesting. Yes. I was given a, a form to fill up. Okay. Luckily, you know, all the time, I uh, because since I'm very bad at mobility, I always have people uh, beside me. So they managed to fill up the application. Then um, I've been to the doctor. I don't want to name the doctor now. Okay. Then that ophthalmologist was super interested uh, to know more about me because he was, his questions like, you know, how do you operate mobile phone? How, how do you work? How do you earn? How do you run your business? Uh, like, how do you use computers? So what, what I'm trying to tell you here is, eye doctor, the person who deals with blindness and, you know, the person who deals with eye, they themselves have no awareness about uh, uh, people's life, you know, blind guy's life and accessibility, rehabilitation, stuff like that. An eye doctor and ophthalmologist does not deal with blindness. 
they deal with eye conditions that lead to blindness but after blindness it's not their responsibility it's the responsibility of the ngos of this country is the res- responsibility of the rehabilitation centers of this country it the doctors uh, stop there because they themselves have no knowledge about what what has to be done next because if you have lost your sight like i did uh, in in uh, at the age of 35 and uh, overnight you are literally left clueless on what to do next so when uh, when i went in for my uh, diagnosis and uh, uh, the uh, kind of uh, advice i got is oh I'm very sorry but there's no way that we can revive your uh, vision you will have to live like this there was no counseling after that there was no direction on what i could do to you know uh, equip myself with skill it is only that you know uh, a bit of uh, uh, talking with people here and there that i got to know about rehabilitation centers and uh, places like national association for the blind who would train uh, people with a, a sight loss in uh, mobility orientation and computers so the hospitals and the doctors uh, who are dealing with eye condition will will not have so much of knowledge or resource resources on to guide a person who has lost his sight as to what needs to be done next is sex accessible i'm asking you this question i was asked by a girl that you know do blind people have sex oh very difficult topic no <laughs> all right so yeah so just for the sake of your understanding and the understanding of my listeners i i married and uh, i have a healthy daughter who's around 6 years old now so i hope that answers your question in short mustafa it was great talking to you uh, i really enjoyed doing a session with you today and uh, the 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 question the great question coming up for you is if you have all the superpowers in your hands to change something in this country what that one thing would be <laughs> they put me in a really hot seat and a tough spot it's like being in front of amita bachchan right now <laughs> so i don't know if this is a worth a crore of a question but yeah it's a very difficult question to answer uh, i if i want i can be really selfish and uh, ask something for myself but if there was something that needs to be changed in terms of the country uh, i really wish they would be more empathetic towards uh, persons with disability and work towards creating a more inclusive environment infrastructure uh, that could accommodate uh, no matter this irrespective of disability i would say that would be something i would really want to see a change to happen thank you so much for the time mujtaba merchant uh, thank you so much for the opportunity it was great having you on my show thank you thank you so much my dear listeners this was mujtaba merchant hope you enjoyed the show please like share and follow me